I gotta think about why, why, oh. why. Just because you're a guy. Oh, I can't talk about that. Well, you can do, you don't have to say the word. Yeah, but then I see, because I don't want to promote people walking up to her on the street. Cause oh. I, oh, I'll just make it generic. I'll okay. just. No, tell us, but tell a story. Tell a story. Oh, okay, I'll just, all right, I'm going to sing it. Okay. A reading from the, um, what's that called? Okay, I'll just. Oh, I didn't know you were rolling. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's so much fun to work with her. I remember um, not very long ago on a, on a Friday afternoon, Oprah was in the office, and as you know, she's not very shy. And uh, we were sitting around, we were talking on the phone, pre-interviewing guests, whatever, and she came in and we started talking with her. Well, you never have a normal conversation with Oprah. She either makes you laugh until you cry, or it's something that's un unbelievable. So we started talking about readings and how she used to be a, a public speaker when she was growing up through high school and everything. So she got it. She got the idea that she would give us a little sample of what she used to do when she was like in kindergarten. She got up on top of the desk. We dimmed the lights. I brought out a tape recorder and she did a reading that was unbelievable. I mean the reading made you laugh. It made you cry. I mean people were walking by. They could see through the windows and there's Oprah Winfrey standing on the desk giving this reading and we were, we were beside, the, beside ourselves. And in the background half the staff was singing Amazing Grace. Low background, but it was, it was, yeah, that's just a typical day here. When I worked with Oprah, she said to me one time, don't ever, I, Mary, I never want to see you wearing a bow blouse again. Oh, yeah. You were famous for them, though. Yeah. And I never will. And I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you. Has she ever told you any, has she ever done that kind of a commentary? Does she continue on with the fashion commentary? Fashion commentary? You see, the thing about Oprah is, and I talk about this with her all the time, and it is if she ever says anything to you, it, it's always right. You know, that's the thing. It's always right. She will never make a comment to hurt your feelings. It's always a constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I've tried to catch her on it, but it's al always a constructive criticism. Because half the time you're sitting in an office, you're on the phone, you're making 100 phone calls all the day, every day, all day long, and you don't really get into the way you look. But we see audiences and everything like that. So, yeah, she's a, she's a fashion diva. Oh, the only thing that she said about me is, could you put on some lipstick? Could you do that for me, please? <laughs> Have you ever told her exactly what you think of her? Oh, yeah. Oh, all the time. Um, we talk about, I mean, we don't talk very much about her clothes because she's got an excellent sense of taste. She always has and she always will. She, she can carry off bold styles. Um, she started wearing scarves over her shoulder. And now, in every department store I look, there are mannequins. I'll turn around, I think it's Oprah. It's a mannequin with a scarf over their shoulder. She wears big, bold earrings. She knows what, what looks good on her, so she, much more so than I do. So there's no criticism in that area. But we talk, when you're friends with someone, you're able to say, you know, I don't think you should do that, or I think so and such and such. And it's back and forth. And she listens. So she may not act like it right then. Um, or, or she'll, um, let's see. There's points where you've got to tell her what you've got. Yeah, nothing that, nothing, just business-wise, and it's, you know. All right, then, then what do you think of her hair? Mm, I like her hair, but I think that her hair looks better in person than it does sometimes on camera, because you, she, there's such a big area in the studio that she walks around in, you can't, it's not, we can't always light it so you can see each individual strand, so sometimes it doesn't read as well. But the great thing about it is it changes every day to suit her mood, to suit whatever she's wearing. And for anyone who doesn't like her hair, she's confident enough to say, hey, I like it. I'm having fun with it. But it'll continue to change. Mm -hmm. And I like, oh, I'm sorry. And I like the fact that um, it makes her happy. And she, she feels such confident in herself that she, confidence in herself that she can do something that she likes. What are people saying? Some people don't like it. Some people do like it. And, what I, and, and people have uh, no, they, will, they have, um, wait, let me start over. People, some people like it and some people don't like it. And people have told her, they'll walk right up and say, I either like it or I don't like it. And she says, fine, great, I love it. That's Oprah. Um, when she's hurt you, how does she say she's sorry? Hmm. She really hasn't. Okay. When you're telling people that your job isn't glamorous, what story do you tell them? 
I tell people that I'm here at 7.30 in the morning most mornings, and I'm here quite late most evenings. And to work on this show is to feel a great deal of passion for it and to feel a great deal of, of passion for Oprah and the message that we want to get across. So in terms of glamour, what you have to consider is most days you're not meeting a celebrity. Most days you're spending all day on the phone, you're talking to agents and publicists and you're meeting with the staff. And it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of brain work. We're not out chopping wood by any means. But we're here and there are crisis situations and stressful situations. Um, I'd say every 20 minutes in any given day. There's something cropping up. Just last night, um, flights were canceled that the guests were on out of New York. And we're calling around all the hotels around LaGuardia looking for our guests for today's show. Just another fun thing to do at midnight. So um, in terms of glamour, it's not a, that's, that's not high on the list. But on the glamorous side, we do get to meet a lot of people that are on, in the headlines and on the front pages of every newspaper and magazine. And you meet them briefly. So whatever glamour and excitement is, is really from the people watching the show. It, um, the excitement is really being around Oprah and being around the guests and having a successful show. Uh, what a producer does. What we do as a group is we all s we, we spend a lot of time together coming up with ideas for the shows and to do that we read a lot of newspapers and magazines. Uh, newspapers from all over the country, local newspapers, uh, national newspapers, and everything in between. We uh, watch a lot of newscasts, we listen to the radio, we talk a lot to our audience members, we get a lot of viewer mails, we get a lot of viewer phone calls. People feel very comfortable calling into the show. We'll get a call from Topeka or San Francisco or whatever, and they'll call in and say, Hey, how you doing? I saw your name on the credits, and I, I have a show idea for you. So we'll talk to them. A lot of times it helps if they write in first, because we're getting hundreds of calls a day. But most of our time is spent on the actual content of the show. And once we come up with an idea, and we've all decided that it, it will be a good idea, and people that are watching want to see it, we have to find the guests. So the other half of the day is spent calling every expert in the country, um, every group, every rehab group, every counseling group, trying to find the person who best articulates a given subject. And that takes a lot of time. Do you like doing like Meet the Staff shows? Meet the Staff shows, you know, when the show was still local, we did a couple of them, so we got our feet wet. As you can probably tell by now, I'm not a very shy person, so I didn't mind doing it. But there's always the chance that you'll look like an idiot. So uh, we're, it's not one of our favorite things to do, to tell you the truth. It's, uh, we'd rather be behind the scenes. If we wanted to be in front of the camera, we would have gone in that direction professionally. But we like, we like being behind the camera. It's, it's, it's more comfortable. If you could give Oprah a gift, what would it be? Well, if I, I see, Oprah changes. Um, like the seasons. And what the great thing about Oprah is, she'll let you know what she's collecting. She went through a phase where she was collecting perfume bottles. And so somehow word got out, I don't know how. And within a week, I think she had the whole collection complete. <laughs> it's an easy way to collect. Then she was collecting towels. And lo and behold, the towels started pouring in. <laughs> so I, it's not like one thing that I want to get her. I, I just wait for whatever it is that's going to happen. So. I'm just waiting for the latest trend. <laughs> what is the best part about doing this show? Oh, uh, the best part about doing this show. The best part about doing this particular show is it's so much fun to come to work in the morning because we're all uh, we all like each other a lot. We really do, and it's sort of um, we know everything there is to know about each other. We we work very hard. We get along. Oprah's part of the gang here, and it's a fun place to work. And to top it off, the show is real successful. And that's like the icing on the cake. But uh, it's a great lifestyle, and that's the best part about it, because you can look at other people who work on successful shows, and not everyone gets along, and it's not always a fun thing, but their show's still number one, and they're successful. Well, I always say, think about that deathbed scene. Think about when you're on your last leg, you are in, on your deathbed, and you're thinking back on what's really important. And what's really important are the people that will be around you then, and uh, the people make this a great place to be. Ending button. Um. <laughs> <laughs> want, to re want to make that shorter? It's perfect. Okay. Describe your staff. Describe the magic. Okay, there's a great, there's a, Sorry. no one, okay. Oh, the staff here is a great um, conglomeration of, of women, strong professional women. There is, and they have great personalities. There is the person who is more of the 
I like to go to a tea party kind of person who, who deals more with the, um, the publicists and the celebrities. And she's got a distinct personality. She's very organized and she's very neat and she's detailed and we need her. And then there's a person who likes to do more of the interpersonal shows and, and she gets wrapped up in people's stories and, and just totally disorganized. Papers everywhere and she's great. And then there's a person who's just right on it with the trends and the news making and the headlines and, and just the, all of the personalities go together. And I got to tell you that uh, when the chips are down, they're there. They think not, there are no qualms about coming in on Saturday. We're here Sunday night sometimes till midnight. And it's very difficult to find a group of people who will give up so much of their personal life to make, to make a television show work. I want to try that one more time in, in a shorter time. Okay. And it's just a matter of describing the magic that, what you said to me last night about, I got a great date that night. Mm -hmm. You know, because Oprah talked about it too in my interview. Okay, so what do you need, like the des general description of the group? Not, not, yeah, not the individuals. More, okay. It's more like that we all like each other, I think. Okay, okay. Uh, um, yeah, I don't think you can turn that bit. Yeah, because it still rings. It's a great group of producers. Um, I think it, it doesn't happen very often that it, you get a group together like this that gets along so well and works so hard. Um, they're the kind of people that you can count on when the chips are down. They're here on a Saturday night. They're on a su they're here on a Sunday night. They're a group of they may they're they're very attractive and that may put you off a little bit. But they are some of the most hardworking, strongest women professionals that I've ever worked with. And I'm really proud to say that most of us are all women. All the women are producers. Let me start over again. Yeah, but I'm rambling. You want this to be 20 seconds. <laughs> okay. Give me the question again. What's the question? Describe the magic that makes this show work. Okay. Well, that's a combination. The reason this show works, I think, is a combination of two things. One of them is the, is the charisma of Oprah Winfrey and her personality. And the fact that she asks the question the woman next door wants to ask, and she lets her hair down, or sometimes she lets it up. And um, it's a combination of that and the women behind her. There are four producers here that are extremely hardworking, professional. They're here from dawn to dusk, and they give it their all. They give it their passion. And that combination of Oprah and that group of women together, that's why it works. Great. Okay. How did you and Oprah ce uh, celebrate the winning of the Emmys? We're almost done, Deb. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Da, 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 da. You mean? The clothing. Oh, oh, okay. Well, after we won the Emmy, there was a big party and a big dinner, and all the executives were there, and it was fine. It wasn't, it wasn't what I considered to be the best time. The next day, um, it was just Oprah and someone else who works on her production company and I, Alice McGee and I, went out, and we went down, and we were in New York, we went down to Soho, and we went on a little shopping spree to celebrate. And afterwards, we went to dinner at this little, tiny, out-of-the-way place in Little Italy in New York. And that's when I turned to her and I said, you know, I'm having a much better time today because this is really the celebration for winning the Emmy. Because what it's all about is saluting each other and thanking each other. And that was, that was a real good time. I heard you guys uh, backed up Michael Jackson on his album. Oh, yeah. Did we tell you that? We were, yes, we sing. We went, we did meet Michael Jackson because Oprah's is good friends with Quincy Jones. And um, so we went when they were recording the album Bad to the recording session. And it was, that's when you say you go into the glamorous category. It must be so fun to have your job. Well, you know, once in a lifetime you get to do something like that. So at the time he was singing, he was, they were recording the track Dirty Diana. And oh, I turned it over at one point during the recording session because, of course, we were just watching. I said, by the time we're done with this story, we will have been singing back up on Dirty Diana on Michael Jackson's Bad Album. So when the album came out, we tried to spread the rumor, but no one would believe us. But that's us, way in the back, singing Dirty Diana. Believe me, it's true. <laughs> oh, do you want to add in that her name is on the jacket cover? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm cut right straight to the jacket cover, so you can just say... But then... Okay, so when the album came out, I was so shocked and surprised because when you pull the album out, they have a list of thank yous for help on the album. And Oprah Winfrey's name was mentioned and mine wasn't. So I said to her, I think it's because they couldn't spell my last name. I think that was it because you know we were singing on that track. Mm-hmm. Her name, not mine. I wonder why. <laughs> okay, I, you've done it. So okay. I'm try it. Oh. Just give it one more shot, and that is... Um, the theme of my story is that the staff is a reflection of Oprah, and Oprah is a reflection of the staff, and uh -huh. that's part of why the audience at home loves her. So I, um, one more bite about 
how much you love her and she loves you back and how that all comes out on TV. Are you guys going to get sick or what? <laughs> oh, God, I'm nauseating myself. <laughs> I know, yeah, but you, you know, I know it is, but you know, okay, I know I'm not trying to be difficult. Oh, I'm not is. trying to be difficult. <laughs> okay, so what's the question? <laughs> How much we love each other? Do you love each other? Oh, I know what you need. You need, you need, oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. I know, I just don't know how to get into it. We love each other because, what's really the question? This is what I want you to say. Okay, tell me. This is very professional. <laughs> Oprah loves her staff and they love her and that love gives America the Oprah it can't seem to get enough of. Okay. And that's, I mean, if you, there's some way that you can comment on that. Okay. You're not helping me, Joe. John, You're not helping John me. John Hanson, he's going like this, isn't he? Okay. This, I, I think the success, this, okay. <laughs> the show, I think, is successful because of Oprah and because of a group of producers who book great guests that talk about interesting things. But below all that, and what's more important, or really above all that, is the fact that we really care about each other. And that's what makes this such a special place to work. And that's what really makes this such a special time in, a in our lives. I always, I sometimes I turn to Oprah and I say, you know that Bruce Springsteen song, Glory Days? Well, we're living them right now. You gotta pay me for that bite. One more. You're gonna pay me for that. This is it. I'm throwing up. Tell me about what it said in the magazine article that time about Oprah changing. Has Oprah has all this? Which one? It just whenever they say they say that when when she won't do something, the producer looks at her and says, "You've changed." Oh yeah, I supposedly said that. Is that not true? I was very thrilled. If it's not true, then don't even bother with it. No. Answer the question: Has Oprah changed because of all this? No, she hasn't. <laughs> Oprah has not changed because of, uh, of any of this. She still leaves her high heel shoes all over the, the office. She still comes in and says, what are we having for lunch? She has not changed in any way. Mm -mm. Still the same sweet girl we always knew. Okay. Yeah, this crew's never going to... Yes, you do. <laughs> yes. I tell you, I'm not...